So everything in physical reality and spiritual reality already exists, okay, and exists within you. Comic book, the first person to create comic books was Mortal Moon Bay, Shakespeare's father. Repeat that, that name again, bro. Mortal Moon Bay. That was Francis Bacon's father, or mm -hmm. Shakespeare's father. Shakespeare had, they were in the Rosicrucians, they went by many names. And they, they switched names so you wouldn't know who they were. You know, I could use I could use the name Shakespeare if I go to London or whatever. They say, oh, he's still alive, he's still alive. So Shakespeare wrote some plays called comedies. And those comedies had um, positive endings. Some of his plays, sonnets and all that, had different types of endings, tragedies. But comedies always had a positive ending. And this is where you get the term, down throughout the ages, comic books. After it passed through the whole phase of comedy, as far as laughter goes, Okay, and the laughter is the fool or the trickster mm -hmm. in, your, in your tarot deck. The only person that can laugh at God and get away with it. Okay, right. so, so comedy, comic books come down from, the, in modern times, through Shakespeare into the form that we have now, uh, which, which is layers of definitions of what it means which we're going to deal with layers uh, to different archetypes. So this book is a book, uh, is your book. This is your book. And it's going to be very rare because I can't, I, I can't afford to keep putting it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hardcover and color. Psh, come on, you know, you know that nigga had to pay some shit for that motherfucker. <laughs> okay. So, so it's it's for you. So get it while you, while it's there, while it's out. Don't come ten years later trying to find it. You know it ain't gonna be around because the book companies have been asking me to print it, uh, have it printed up. But why would I leave it to the book company when I could do it myself? Okay, and that's what you need to do. Start self promoting. So here I am. Still, still around. Didn't kick the bucket yet. I'm gonna be here for a long time, and the book is still around. But the book is getting ready to go into obscurity because volumes two is coming out, and then volume uh, three, which will be the finals. So you want to get those? I, I would get them. Okay. So, yeah. so it's a little pricey, but what can I do about that? I can't do nothing about that. It costs me. Okay, cost me to bring you this gift from the universe. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from me. I got you. Sorry, from the universe. So I just wanted to I just wanted to say that first. All right, and uh, you know that's I'm gonna say it to the people that's something really that I'm the book in itself the the content I'm attracted to it because you know um, during let's say the last five years I really increased my awareness to that type of uh, knowledge so uh, you know what I'm saying I'm going to get a copy especially it's part of my uh, journey as well but you know what I'm going to share something a, one of your artwork we talked about it a little bit earlier so bear with me bro <laughs> you're seeing it well right yeah alright so uh, people, when Zaria came on the Galactic Talk back in May, uh, Zaria did talk about, you know, the esoteric meaning of this artwork. And back then, I omit to, you know, because I had several things to talk, right? So I didn't mention this to Zaria. Uh, when I had to do some of my recalls, right? So wherever I went, throughout the galaxies every time i had to go to a store system i literally uh arrived and you know manifest my presence in three phases and 
uh, Brother Azaria did talk about, you know, how these beings, ET beings, when manifest, when he had to manifest his presence here, came actually, you know, two or three uh, stages. And that's what I have. Well, my truth, I confirmed this, this artwork, you see. So, uh, bro, you were speaking on the uh, number three, uh, the phase. Would you mind again, share it uh, to the people that may, you know, that's probably is coming to the, uh, let's call, you know, Mr. School, you know, esoteric knowledge. Yes, sir. Well, let me say this. When a person walks into a movie house, and when he looks up at the screen, that's all he can see. He can't see people sitting down. He don't know what's going on. He's walking blindly and he needs somebody to take him by the hand with a flashlight to show him to a seat. Okay? So the people sitting there already have already, they know what's going on. They can see everything and you're interrupting their flow. So I want to say that there are people that are coming in that may not understand what we're, I'm about to say with the three and all of that, that, could, that are coming in and we, we cannot go into Christianity when we're dealing with these people. And I'm going to explain that too. So I'm just mentioning right yeah. this right now. Okay. Now here's the three. Your mind is the film with the camera. Your eyes are the lens. And number three, physical reality is the screen. So what's on your film in your camera that comes out through the lens is what you project out there to see. Now, number three is the number of the unit, Tesla, everybody, scientists, all of that know that number three is a universal principle and the creation of the universe itself. Three is the number 369, but those are multiples of threes. That is the man, woman, child. Okay? When you have a man and a woman, you have a child. That's the number three. Mm -hmm. Mental, spiritual, and physical. Okay? So your spirit, your, your, your mental comes up with the plan, your spirit moves on it, and you can manifest it. Those are the three phases of the video camera you have in your mind. The manifestation is the last stage in physical reality. Right. Okay? So that, that is the, basically the number three. Now, number three has positive and it has negative. The negative part of number three, I call the three types of fear, mm -hmm. which the Illuminati knows that that exists within the reptilian brain. And they tap the reptilian brain. I'm not going to go into the detail of when they, at the, at the age of, Earlier than the age of seven, they implant fear. Uh, you already have a little bit of fear, but they really implant it through television shows and so on. You have physical fear, which are things that harm you physically. And of course, they shoot Daffy Duck in the face with a shotgun. They, they do all kind of murderous acts right in front of you on cartoons. We even got used to it and want to laugh. I don't, yeah. So now if a person falls and slips on the street, you laugh. You don't know why you're laughing because you have that program in you, which is physical fear. And that's the thing that that physical fear, you've grown so used to it that it actually becomes funny to you when you see it externalized on someone else. Mm -hmm. Then you have mental fear. Mental fear are anxieties about what other people think about you. When you're worried about what other people think, or would you, did he think, did, did he so and so and so and so? Okay, and you'll never know what they're thinking. Okay, 
And they don't really even care. They, they'll see it for a minute and then go on about their business. Then you have spiritual fear, which is superstition. So you have physical, mental, and spiritual fear. And that ties into um, one aspect of what I want to talk, talk about is in dealing with sex magic. But we're going to keep it clean. I'm not going to go too heavy. I'm going to keep it very, very simple. Yep. You have three aspects of how love should go. You have love itself. Then you have intimacy. You could probably see that on one of my charts in my book. I put a chart in my book. Love, int intimacy, and trust. Okay? Love, intimacy, and trust. And they all can work separately. You can have intimacy and not have love. You can have intimacy and not have trust. You can have trust and not have love or one without the other. That's how that operates. Mm -hmm. But they have a say what we call, we call it satanic opposites, which is really left brain opposites. And the left brain opposites, the opposite of love actually is control. Some people will say fear, some people say whatever they're gonna say, but it's control. Okay. You can't throw me in the jail and tell me you love me, nigga. Okay? You can't do things to control me with a whip on my back and all of this and say, oh, I'm doing it because I love you. So the opposite of love is control. Intimacy is a energy where man and woman come together um, intricately, knowing secrets of the heart, the mind, and so on. I can go deeper into that, but we'll leave it right there. Right. The opposite of intimacy is manipulation. Because when you don't have intimacy, that's where a lot of women get caught up by being manipulated by these Negroes. Or yeah. there's a man, men could be manipulated too. You think she love you. The opposite of intimacy is manipulation. Trust. Now, what is the opposite of trust? That is fear. That is fear. Just like your mama might say, hey, um, son, go to the store for me and get the right thing. Otherwise, I'll beat your ass or whatever. What the hell are you talking about, you Peter Zat? That is fear. That is not trust. That's not love. You're projecting those three levels of fear that I talked about, physical, mental, and spiritual fear. You don't tell your child or you don't, your mother will say, listen, if you do that again, I'm going to beat your ass. Nobody else beats their kid except for, uh, except for, well, I'm not going to say melanated people. I would say black. Not indigenous people, not copper tone people, but only black people beat their children. And bro. Yes. I want that one. There's a specific reasons and I'm going to uh, show one of your pick after this, but keep on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so trust is the, fear is the opposite of trust. So those three levels of fear, you only have them because what? You don't trust something. You don't trust yourself. So you, you don't trust yourself. Uh, uh, so you have mental fear about what people think about you. That's why when somebody say to me, yo, man, let me do this for you, man. Don't you trust me? Nigga, I don't even trust my damn self. The fuck you talking about? How the fuck I'm gonna trust you? Hell no, okay? Spiritual fear, superstition. Yo, there's some weird, listen, there is more paranormal shit out here. Through the use of technology, we can see more shit than ever before and prove that that shit is real, okay? Because you can see, we only see 5% of what's out there, but with added with the computer, which is 2%, Make your 5% and that 2%, 7%. You see a little bit more. So superstition, I'm like, yo, that, I don't know, man. That's, that's shit. <laughs> I've seen it. I don't know if it's real or not. And then physical fear. Okay? 
So, so those are the three types of things that take place when you're dealing with fear. So, but control, the opposite of love, intimacy, and trust is control, manipulation, and fear. And control, manipulation, and fear operate together. Love, intimacy, and trust can operate freely, but not control, manipulation, and fear. They have to work together in order for it to work. Those three. Keep in mind, mothers, okay? Keep that in mind. So, so you want to show your child love, you don't control them that way. I always told my daughter when she was ra she's raising my grandchildren, if he goes and he jumps in a puddle of water, splashing up and down, getting wet, don't stop him. Because he's at the age that he's running scientific tests on what that water can do and is tapping into his freedom of movement. Allow him to do that. And when he gets older, he could be a scientist. Don't say, get out of that water for I'll beat your ass. You, you understand me? Stop beating on your children for bullshit. Don't do it. And that's how I broke the mental slavery in my mother's Carolina bloodline. Because many of us have indigenous Moorish background in, a, in my father, but my mother had, he was married to my mother who was, have ancestry throughout slavery, but the slaves weren't brought here. They were made slaves while they were here. So, so you have to get rid of that, Willie Lynch and all that. You have to get rid of it. Because we all, everybody that's listened to this, this talk have had problems with their parents based on some type of programming of mind control. Whether it's the food you eat, whether it's whatever it may be, you were taught to eat that and do that. Okay, and one thing my mother never did was spank me. And I, I found that fucking amazing. When I think about all the shit that she pissed me the fuck off, she never fucking gave me a spanking at all. Never. So, God bless her. Right.